October 27, 2015, would like to welcome each of you uh, to our morning proceedings of the Board of Commissioners for Putnam County. At this time with us is Dr. Ken Johnson of Road Havers Boys Ranch Chapel, and uh, he's prepared to lead us in our invocation, and Commissioner Nancy Harris is prepared to lead us in saluting our great nation. Let's all stand. Let's bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning on the occasion of an important meeting of our area's leaders. We ask you to work in their minds and hearts so they will keep in mind their responsibility to you, our creator, savior, and sustainer. Give them wisdom as they interact with you, each other, and their constituents. Help them to make the hard decisions that will prosper our county as well as preserve your blessings upon themselves and the people of Putnam County. While they serve in their offices each day and get out and talk with people, may they hear what they need to hear and righteously do the right thing. Protect them as they serve, protect and bless our counties under their leadership. Have your way in this meeting and bless all that are present as we do our business and as we also do your business. In Christ Jesus, our Lord's name we pray, amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Commissioners each should have received the minutes from the October 13, 2015 regular meeting proceedings. What is your pleasure? Move approval, Mr. Chair. Second. second. Proper motion and second. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. This morning, we're very humbly proud to uh, present uh, William Osteen in General Services as the employee of the quarter uh, for this time of recognition. Mr. Administrator. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask Will Osteen to come forward, please, and meet the chairman at the uh, podium. Will is a trades worker with General Services, and Will began working for the county in September of 2013. Uh, Will is uh, in the Buildings and Grounds Division. He's one of those gentlemen who works behind the scenes to keep the lights on and the building temperatures pleasant and the uh, <laughs> water flowing, and uh, we certainly want to congratulate you, Will, on being recognized by a committee of your peers as the employee of the quarter for December uh, quarter. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. Will, on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, um, as you have been awarded this employee of the quarter, in recognition of your exemplary service for the quarter ending December 31st, 2015, presented by the Putnam County Board of Commissioners on this 27th day of October, 2015. And again, it's not just your hard work and the industrious efforts that you put forth, your attitude really goes before you and your positive attitude and how you interact uh, with those that you work with as well as our community is greatly appreciated. So we very humbly not only present you this certificate, but we present to you uh, a token of that appreciation there and may you continue to have many more great years with our county. Well, thank you all thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank everyone. You. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Recount. <laughs> Mr. Thank Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, while you are getting your photo, I want to thank Mr. Osteen also. Mr. Osteen could be employed outside of county employment and probably make a lot more money, but we're very fortunate to have him here. He's an air conditioning specialist, and with just many buildings and in inventory, you're very appreciated. Very much he, so. <laughs> he's from rooftop to rooftop fixing these AC units in the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to make a couple of comments because uh, we actually reside probably in one of the oldest buildings that he and uh, everyone that works for General Services uh, have to take care of. And I see Danny out here, and I want to personally thank them for their hard work on that building because it's a constant issue with the courthouse. But uh, they're never uh, anything but pleasant and on the job um, because they know that we have hundreds of people that come through that building, hundreds that work there, and it's just so uh, 
nice to know that when there's an issue that they're right there. And we, I just want to thank you on behalf of the court system for your great work. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can release you now to make sure that the air is right all over. <laughs> Commissioners, on the item four, the Honorable Linda Myers, our tax collector, is here uh, for some additional employee recognition. So, welcome this morning. Thank you. And, and before Will and Danny leave, we are all dependent on them. Yes. Talk about old buildings, right? <laughs> they keep them running. Thank you. Um, glad to be here. Two weeks ago, we celebrated 35 years of folks serving their neighbors in your tax collector's office. Today, we're doing 55 years, so that is a total of 90 years commitment wow. from about eight people to Putnam County. That's pretty fantastic. Yes, it is. Let me first call up Patsy Davis, who is the Supervisor of Motor Services, Director of Motor Services. Patsy, would you join me, please? Patsy Davis. Patsy Treadwell. Patsy Davis has Treadwell. been gone yeah. now two yeah. years. She retired. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty move. <laughs> Patsy Treadwell. Patsy, please join me because we're going to be recognizing two of the folks that you supervise. Um, and I'll has, let you hand those out to them as they come up. The first person we want to recognize is Victoria Yinkst. Victoria, would you join us? She is celebrating five years full-time work with the tax collector's office. After a brief six-month part-time engagement with us, we knew she was a keeper. Her most recent history before starting with the tax collector's office was working with the Board of Realty in Alachua County, bringing her real property knowledge to our office. Early in her career with us, she served Putnam County from the main office in Palatka, but most recently working with our South Putnam folks for the past two years. She has made a great addition to our Crescent City team, and a quote from Victoria describing how she, what she thinks of her customers, I just love serving them, I just love my job. Please join me in congratulating Victoria for five years serving Putnam County, and by the way, a little Volusia County comes up to Crescent City, don't they? Nancy, you would know that. Okay. Next, if we could ask Sandy Palmer to join me here. Sandy also works in the customer service represent as a customer service representative in the tax collector's office. She is celebrating 10 years serving Putnam County citizens, and I have to say she started that career right here working for the BOCC, first in public works, where she got her start, and then in planning and development office, which um, you all work with intimately daily, I'm sure, and know the, the work there with our customers is so important. Recently transferring to our, our, to our office 11 months ago, um, she has brought that wealth of knowledge and skills to our office to serve citizens continually. She is a recent graduate of Flagler College with a, ba with a bachelor's in public administration. And as you can tell, she is a delight to have on the job with us. A quote from Sandy describing her commitment to her customers, it's just a pleasure to be able to serve the public. Please join me in congratulating Sandy for 10 years of service to Putnam County. <laughs> now if I can ask Katie Robinson to join us. She is our Chief Financial Officer with, the, with your Tax Collector's Office. And we will be honoring one of her in employees, and that would be Marie Orr. Marie, would you join us as well? Marie is celebrating 20 years right. serving Putnam County, the entire 20 years in your tax collector office. We are blessed to have her knowledge, historical perspective, and commitment to our customers. Prior to joining the tax collector team, Marie worked at Scruggs Motor Company in office work with responsibilities covering title work, cashiering, and other activities, including delivering title work to the tax collector office, which is probably where we discovered her talents and decided she'd be a great fit for the office. The title work she brings to us is invaluable experience. Hired as a customer service representative, then moving to the finance department in 2001, where she's working with Katie Robinson and then Jim Kircher, in 2004, Marie advanced to the accounting specialist position. She is a part of the team that has successfully, and there's a three-person team in the finance office, they have successfully received Fl Florida Tax Collectors Association recognition for exemplary accounting work. And of course, it goes without saying, they were all delighted at years and years of clean audits. 
A quote from Marie to describe her commitment of 20 years, I love what I do. Please join me in congratulating Marie for 20 year commitment to Putnam County. And finally, but least and not least, is Rose Wilkinson. Rose, would you please join us? Many of you know Rose as well. That's a face that's very familiar with you. Rose is celebrating 20 years serving Putnam County as well. The entire 20 years was with the tax collector office. We are blessed to have her knowledge and perspective and commitment to customers. Prior to joining the TC team, Rose worked at Bainbridge Motors. Is there a, is there a theme here? <laughs> she worked at Bainbridge Motors as their finance officer with responsibilities covering title work and other activities. Title work is an invaluable job set in our office, and she brought this skill to the office in 1995. Hired as a customer service representative in the beginning, she quickly transferred in that year to be serving as the dealer clerk. And in 2009, Rose advanced to administrative assistant, serving Ken Mahaffey in numerous daily operational activities, as well as the all-important HR function. She continued her career of serving Putnam County citizens now as the Director of Tax Administration beginning in 2014, where she has revamped a number of our system, systems and continues to stay on the leading edge of bring, bringing our office into the 21st century, as well as a tremendous commitment to customer service. A quote from Rose to describe those 20 years, I love serving my neighbors, Putnam County folks. Please join me in congratulating Rose for 20 years. I know we have to do the wonderful photo. Yvonne, are you ready? We are. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience. Patsy, could you please join us? I didn't see you sat down. <laughs> Just go right over here, please. <laughs> we need five left seconds right away, Yvonne. So before I leave you, I, I think it's an important announcement to make. If you haven't seen today's paper, we have certified the role in our office. Better to say that the, the property appraiser certified the role over to us, and it is complete and open for operation. So if any of the taxpayers here today want to either come in and pay or want to use the online, it's now available online as of yesterday afternoon, and uh, we are open for business. So thank you for the opportunity to introduce hardworking 90 years of commitment to your citizens and ours. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Join with me as we invite Mary Garcia and Tess Simpson uh, to the uh, front. Good morning. Thank you so very much for being here. I'd like to present for consideration of this board proclamation number 2015-88, supporting the Healthiest Weight Florida Initiative. Whereas the Putnam County Board of Commissioners support policies that focus on healthy weight, health and wellness, and healthier lifestyles in all communities. And whereas the Florida Department of Health has launched a healthy weight campaign known as Healthiest Weight Florida, a public-private collaboration to help Florida's children and adults make informed, consistent choices about healthy eating and active living. This program has been embraced by individuals and businesses in many cities, counties, and communities. And whereas the State Surgeon General has launched a 2016 Healthy Weight Community Champion Recognition Program that will recognize local governments and active municipalities, cities, towns, and villages and 67 counties that implement policies to help people become more physically active and improve nutrition. Best, practices, best practice policies implemented by communities will be recognized on January 4, 2016. Whereas poor nutritional choices and a lack of physical activity are linked to overweight and obesity, which increase the risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, liver disease, hypertension, and other health conditions. And whereas Putnam County officials believe that there are important long-term community benefits to be gained by encouraging healthy lifestyles, including a decrease in overweight and obesity in Florida's adults and children and the associated negative health-related impacts. 
and whereas community partners can work together to ensure that there are safe places for residents to be active, such as in parks, ball fields, pools, gyms, and recreation centers. And whereas access to healthy foods has a direct impact on the overall health of our community, and planning for fresh food, open space, sidewalks, and parks should be a priority. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Putnam County Board of Commissioners challenge all governments, businesses, students, parents, and all residents to participate in the Healthy Weight Florida campaign to foster healthy weight and improve overall health, improve job and school performance, and decrease work and school absenteeism. Commissioners, I present this for your approval. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a proper motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Now done, ordered, and adopted this 27th day of October 2015. Um, in 2013, I was here and presented the first um, Healthy Weight Community Champions application. Uh, P Putnam County was one of 34 municipalities and counties in the state of Florida to receive one of the first um, Healthy Weight Community Champions for the work for um, the parks and recreations and the trails and the unique uh, a partnership that they have with community members. Um, last year, we also received the designation. We were only one of 67 municipalities and counties to receive it. So with your permission, um, Tess and I will work on the application for this year's um, application. Um, we imagine there'll be a lot more individuals and municipalities submitting, but um, we're hopeful that with our Bartram Trail project, um, being here the last couple weeks and some of the trails that are occurring in Putnam County and the new trailheads that were opened up this year, that that'll be our focus for our submission for our application this year. Super. So we look forward to that. Thank you for your leadership, and I think we have a dynamic team with you and Tess working. Uh, a little dangerous, yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> together to make uh, healthier communities, and that, that means a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, thank you. Citizens, next on our agenda is public comments, and this portion of the agenda is designed to allow our citizens to bring matters to our attention. It's not reasonable to expect that we will engage in debate or deliberation about matters in which we have not received any prior information as a part of our agenda packet. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes uh, there, and public comment cards are conveniently placed at the entryway of, uh, on both sides coming in, and we would appreciate if you will submit those to the deputy clerk who sits uh, to the right of the podium. Ms. Carolyn Swope has um, indicated that she'd like to speak to us concerning Fire Station Number 4 Interlochen meeting. Good morning. Carolyn Swope, 137 Oak Crest, Interlochen. Just a public announcement on next Monday, November 7th, we have the honor of hearing County Clerk Tim Smith speak at the Interlochen Fire Station Number 4 at their regular monthly meeting It'll start at seven o'clock and the fire station is located in town by the caboose. And I thank you. Okay, thank you very kindly. I'm sure our clerk will represent well. Okay, that's all the speaker cards I have. Any other citizens who would like to come forward, please come forward, state your name and address for the record and uh, we will be all ears. Morning. Good morning. Leroy Camel, 117 Gladys Avenue, East Palaka, Florida. I'm back up here this morning. I'm just shy four months of six years, and it took me this long to find out really why they were not opening the canal when they had my complaint for over five and a half years would they open up through the farms and they let it cesspool in there on us. At the meeting 
went Mr. Van Zandt and Mr. Hudson was here, I got a chance to speak before them that night. You had left before the stove got hot. And when I brought up about that canal, he looked right over there at the county commissioners. And he said, we gave y'all money earlier this year. Mr. Laba got up and he said, the problem is when they open up through the farms, the nutrients coming down through the dog branch to go to the river, we can't let them go in the river. And, and, and that's a discredit when you put all of that stuff off of the canal. And y'all knew this, and I've been running up here all this time, and it was already known what was going on. We wasn't letting that water get off of us because of the nutrients in it mainly low-grade arsenic and stuff like that, and y'all rather, but you allow GP, you allow GP to put pipeline from the mill in the river, but then you won't let the natural water come off of the farm. You bank it in there on us, and it's not, I, I don't feel so bad when I think about it now, but it wasn't right because it's not only colored people there, it's white people in there too. So. You're killing all of us, slowly but surely. I also went back to the uh, water management. They did tell me eventually y'all had a meeting with them, but I help a poor ignorant fella like me understand why you clean all of that, but you won't open up that and take the pressure off of us. That's what I can understand. You dump everything and when it rained it washed the roads out over there. Y'all know this. I've been out there 49 years and I know it and I know y'all know it. I rode through there with commissioners, showed them them roads and things. Every time we get a big rain we have the same problem but then you let it cesspool in there on us and you won't let it go on to the river. But years ago the other kind of commissioner, they would open that canal on up to the river and get the water off of us. Reverend K. Moore, with all due respect, um, I attended the first part of that meeting. It was not a county commissioner's meeting. It was a legislative delegation, and it was an opportunity for all of our citizens to speak with our state legislators. When it comes down to uh, opening up the canal, the appropriation that this county commission sought was approved for the engineering to be done so that that area can be open. It's a two-step process that's involved. So your information or your misinformation and all of the historical data that you have because you have been a longtime resident uh, in the Orange Mills area, I respect uh, your perceptions and your opinions of, of all of that. Carl Flagg, is not aware of some of the institutional knowledge that you have, but I do have the knowledge of the fact that this commission uh, made it a priority for Dog Branch Canal uh, to be opened up in all of those areas where it has not been opened. Now, as far as the nutrients, how they're running and things of that nature, we have the scientists and the experts to address and to deal with that. My aim is to make sure that that canal is open and it's open appropriately by the proper engineering studies and the proper contractors to come in and to make it happen. So all of the other information that you have privy to that I don't, I uh, apologize that you know more about it than I do, but it's a two-step process for us. In order for us to get it done right, the first step has been approved and the money has been allocated by our state legislature to make that happen. And we're waiting and we're pushing as a priority for this county to make sure that if it's any way possible that our legislators appropriate a second appropriation to make sure that this becomes a reality. Mr. Libel, Mr. Pellicia, Mr. Harvey, Ms. Harris, in that order. I, you, you covered most of it, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kmore, the, uh, the power of opening the canal to the river or not is not with this commission. It's squarely with the state. And, we, and Mr. Flagg just described what we've done to ensure that we have some 
uh, process that we can open it. We realize there's a problem there, but since the the uh, environmental effort to keep the river clean, they just don't, in years past, you're right, they did just put anything they wanted in the river, but those days are gone now, and we have to follow protocol and procedure, and that's what we're doing, sir. Uh, I, can I can understand that, but uh, seem to me like that meal puts out more all kind of chemicals and stuff. Okay, well, that's a seeming the mill is in compliance with state and federal regulations. And again, that's above our pay grade. I understand. All right. It's a big, big business. That's not what I said. I know. I, I said that. Okay. It's big business. But big business is having to comply with the law, with the environmental rules and regulations. Mr. Pellicier. Um, Mr. K. Moore, I think I heard you say one time that you remember the last time you remember that being clean was in the 60s. No, no. They cleaned the last time the drag line was in there was in 82. And they cleaned it all the way to the river? Yes, sir. I'm telling you, I live out there, and I don't, well, I don't have a job. I'm retired, so and I don't sell drugs, y'all. So <laughs> I'm retired, disabled. Yes, sir. And I get my pickup, and I ride around, and I observe. Come up the railroad, sit there, and I can look down the canal. Mr. Kmore, I, I've been talking with the farmers in that area they want it clean too I'm, we're pushing for it as hard as we can as as the chairman said it is a two-step process the other night when the governor was in town he and i both grabbed him and told him we, we thanked him for the first allotment of money but we told him the job was not done and we needed that second allotment once the engineering was complete and he he didn't say we could have it but he said get with my staff directed us to uh, a lady in his department who are making contact with now and letting her know that you've, you've taken the first step, let's take the second. Let's finish the job. Well, the problem is I, I goes out to water management and I get one side of the coin. Then I come up here, I get another side of the coin. And on the day that after the meeting, I was out there for about an hour and a half with uh, Mr. Badger and Mr. Child. We sit and we talk. From what they tell me, all the county need to do is put in an application for a permit. That's what they tell me. Okay, they may make it that simple as it relates to the technicalities, but there's no agency uh, even on their level that you walk in and put a piece of paper on the desk and things happen. There are some uh, prerequisites that must be done. Our commitment to you is we can't roll back the hands of time and fix that. all of that, but we are moving forward. We have the proof that we're moving forward. Now, that does not mean there's boots on the ground out there today, but we have the evidence that the appropriation has been made so that that Dog Branch Canal is open all the way to its proper outfall. Mr. Harvey, anything else? Mr. K. Moore, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, uh, when I first got elected and appointed here, you and I rode out there. Yes, sir. I did contact water management. And it, as the chairman said, it's just not as easy to walk in with a piece of paper. We're paying for the sins of our past because <clears throat> we did open that canal up, but we didn't have a permit then, and we about got in trouble for that. So now that they're saying that, we got an engineering study. We'll apply for the permit. We're going to follow the proper policies and procedures, as Commissioner Libel just said. And you're going to see some movement on that soon. But soon is a, a relative word, let me say that. It's going to take a little while to get that project completed because but then you still, time. even if we open that up, you still got the river. And I, I've been over there, and you and I have stood there and looked at that, and sometimes the river is higher than the canal is. So it's not going to empty back out there like it should. But we've got to work on that, and that's why but we need the professionals. What is it in? Mr. Anyway. Kmore? Mr. K. Moore, that's why we need the professionals to be there to tell us what we can and cannot do. Okay. okay. Is it any way then that when it start all of the rain and the water ride that y'all not open up from the Cracker Swamp area to 207? We realize that, and we're working on that diligently right now, and we because are. Because there's pools in there, and it's a cesspool. I, I see. I've been there. I've seen the. I've seen the mobile home in there that shouldn't have probably been permitted to be in there in the first place. I've well, that was another that. under the table right. politics. Well, I don't know about that. I've just yes, seen, I've seen what you're dealing with. 
and we all have and we're all working diligently to get that done as a board of county commissioners. Um, Mr. K Reverend Kmore, we have been working on it. You can hear from the steps that have been explained. It's just not simple and we just ask you to be patient, not think the worst of us, but realize that we have lots of steps to go through too. It's not on the back burner, Reverend. Like I said, we can't do anything with the time lapse and uh, we are moving forward. So thank you for your past patience and your present patience. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir, thank you. Any additional public comments? Good morning. Good morning. John Spells, 106 Citrus Lane. I just watched this kickball game just a while ago, but I'm, I want to make a comment <laughs> on the whole thing. Mr. Liber, when they cleaned that ditch out on Palmetto Bluff, how much engineering and all of that did it take, what they did on Palmetto Bluff out beyond West River Road? They did a good job. All they mainly need to do on Dog Branch is get some of the debris and stuff out. To keep trying to get money from the state to do all this engineering and all, it wasn't no engineering when they were just out there last week cleaning that ditch. And what they don't realize, each time they go in there and dig that ditch along those fields deeper and deeper, eventually that excavator won't reach the bottom. Then you have the same problem. If they spray that debris and kill it, they would eliminate it. But my thing is, why would you go and just keep cleaning it in the fields and it's backing up on the people in the residence? Those people that got those fields don't have to walk through water to get to their houses. And look like y'all would have a little consideration the same way you want him to have patience, let the farmers have patience and tell them the same thing. Y'all doing the best you can. You got engineers doing all of this here. But from my understanding, I done seen enough ditches and stuff clean all of these here long sheets of talk paperwork and all of that, it don't take all of that. All you need is just have access to get in there to get the fallen trees, the limbs and the debris out of the ditch where the water can actually flow. But to dig it in the field and it gets there on the other side of the road and start backing up, actually y'all creates the problem. And I'm finished with that. But my next thing is, my aunt and my mother been coming down here for the longest about Hunter Road. Have anybody made any effort to try to tell them is there a chance that they can get something done to Hunter Road? I spoke to your aunt personally to inform her that this board has approved. We do have the proper approach appropriations for Hunter Road uh, to go from dirt to pavement all the way to Durden Road back out to Highway 20. So she is aware. Okay, so it's going to actually go from the Church Lake Road. of States back up, or y'all going to just stop at Queens and cut back out? So, therefore, the grader still would have to go out there and still grade if you go from one aspect to another. The phase that has been approved and appropriated is the work roads that I just mentioned from Durden Road, Hunter Road, back over to the Church Road. To the Church Road? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other public comments? Yeah, Robert Bly, my card. He's for a consent agenda item. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. We will close the public comment section of our meeting and move forward to the consent agenda. Uh, the, the issues that are marked with an asterisk uh, are, are the indivi individual issues that will be uh, discussed with uh, specific and additional remarks by our county administrator. And we also have item F, uh, an explanation of recruitment that has been requested uh, for additional remarks as well. I will read through the list of um, the consent agenda and commissioners if there are some items that you want uh, not pulled but discussed uh, by the administrator or the proper administrator please uh, make it known uh, as soon as I complete the list item a list of committee minutes and recommendations distributed to become part of the record B is a list of correspondence distributed to become part of the record. C is administration, Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, CDBG, HR, contract $750,000 for the fiscal year 2014, small cities, community development block grant, housing rehabilitation. Item D, administration engagement of Summit Professional Services Incorporated as the community development block grant. HR grant administrator for the same year, small cities, community development block, housing rehabilitation program. Item E, Administration, Florida Forest Service Operating Plan and Mutual Aid Agreement for protection of 312,719 acres of forest and woodlands within Putnam County. 
Item F, Administration, Budget Amendment Resolution, $125,199 to record revenue and allow for the expenditure of DHS Safer Grant to recruit volunteer firefighters. G, Administration, Sheriff Budget Amendment Resolution, $19,294 to record revenue and allow for the expenditure of Florida Department of Transportation and DME grants for seatbelts and drug eradication. Item H, Administration Appointment to the St. John's Harbor MSBU Advisory Committee, Mr. Ray Wilkinson. I, General Services, a list of surplus inventory. J, Administration, SHIP Annual Report Closeout and Certification of Fiscal Year 2013-14. <coughs> Commissioner Harris, any others to be added for remarks? No. Commissioner Libel? None. Commissioner Pellissier? I have none. Commissioner Harvey? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Administrator, item C, D, and F, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, several weeks ago, the board authorized the filing of an application uh, for community development block grant housing rehabilitation uh, application for $750,000 to uh, Department of Economic Opportunity, which administers those funds, uh, which are federal funds, uh, but the, this department administers on, on behalf of the state. Uh, the application was successful, and we have been awarded that uh, housing rehabilitation grant, which will <coughs> uh, be awarded uh, and made available to individuals who qualify. It's an economic-based economic -based, uh, application uh, with rigid uh, eligibility guidelines, and we have also, in item D, uh, solicited uh, proposals from uh, companies that are, might be interested in, in administering uh, this grant for us, as has been the county's practice in the past. Uh, those proposals were reviewed by the uh, senior planner, the uh, engineering manager, and deputy administrator. Uh, they have collectively recommended that uh, Summit Professional Services be engaged to administer the grant uh, for the county. Um, they have uh, administered grants for us in the past, uh, similar grants, and they have done an excellent job and have always uh, received uh, high marks with no budget exceptions uh, in the past whenever these grants have been closed out. So uh, we would continue to recommend that they be awarded the administration of this grant. And in item uh, F, uh, this is merely a budget amendment resolution. Uh, this is not a new grant. This is a continuation of funding that has already been in place and merely is a budget amendment resolution that uh, has been promulgated by the budget officer. Uh, and I don't know whether Mike has any additional comments he wishes to make on that or not. Okay, uh, Mr. Bly is raising the issue of an explanation of recruitment. Mr. Bly? We were recently given a uh, presentation on a $600,000 grant, I believe it was, or 660, something like that. Is this part of that grant? Yes, it is. Would this be considered the last part of the grant, or? I believe this is the remaining funding of that, yes, sir. Okay, I was under the impression that we had already spent that money. So when this came up, I was wondering if we had gotten a new grant. No, it is not a new grant. Part of the reason that I wanted to know about this was that uh, this says to record revenue and allow for expenditures to recruit volunteer firefighters. The last time I believe we had a re recruitment rate of four for the money that was spent. That meant we got four more than what we had before we started with the grant. I'm wondering what we're doing this time that might be different. Are we trying to recruit or are we trying to retain or both? I don't believe that number four is correct, and Mr. Romay is out of town at a, at a Homeland Conference meeting, but uh, I think what he said was that they recruited a number of people, but unfortunately didn't have any net gain in the number of active firefighters because they had a loss of a number of firefighters, and I'm not sure what the total numbers were in terms of the recruitment versus the loss, but uh, uh, you know, this is this is... This is simply the money remaining from that grant, and they'll continue to try to recruit uh, with this money. The, the, my idea was, though, retention seems to be the problem, mm -hmm. not necessarily recruitment, because they did recruit a lot of people. They just weren't able to retain the ones they had. So maybe we need to 
utilize the last bit of that grant a uh, different way than we did the first time. Maybe retention should be looked at more than recruitment. That's my idea. Thank you, Mr. Bly. I'm sure we can arrange for you to meet with Chief Romay and uh, share some ideas that you may have uh, concerning the retaining. All right, thank, thank you for Mr. being Chair. here. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the surface of it, it says that this grant is for recruitment and retaining. Right. So that is the purpose. Right. So, and, yeah. uh, so the overall is for both. But the reality check is, is that although there uh, were individuals that were uh, <coughs> successfully recruited, uh, it's a moving target. And that's not just in our local uh, services. It's, it's across the board. You know, when people have opportunities, you certainly cannot blame them mm -hmm. for taking on those privileges as they come. Mr. Chairman, yes. I'd like to move approval of the mm -hmm. consent agenda. Proper second. motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 8, Mr. Michael Pipko uh, is here requesting installation of solar heating system at the Westover Avenue pool. Good morning, sir. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. <clears throat> if I may. Yes, sir. For the record, we have signatures uh, that are unnumbered. There's approximately 125 okay. Um, signatures okay. on a, a petition requesting the county commission to take action to have installed in the uh, county pool a solar heating system. Uh, the advantages of something like that would be um, uh, would be obvious. The most obvious advantage is that the pool could be used year-round. Uh, the, of course, uh, the, uh, excuse me a moment. The pool could be used year-round. Uh, if we had put in a solar heater that powers a uh, heat pumps in the winter time, the heat pump would work to warm up the water. In the summertime, the the heat pump would work so that to cool off the water. Uh, this would be an advantage to the school swim team. Uh, there's teams in other counties which have access to uh, year-round pools. And if we could have that done, then our team would have a, a better um, competitive advantage. Of course, there'd be more recreational opportunities for people in Putnam County. Uh, senior citizens use the pool quite a bit for uh, aqua aerobics and um, year round again would provide more opportunities uh, uh, for them. A solar energy system requires very little maintenance once installed uh, as opposed to a, uh, a gas fire where you have to constantly buy propane gas to, uh, 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 to run it. Aqua aerobics, adult swimming, lap swimming, uh, water safety team training, uh, swimming lessons can be extended, and you probably could get new uh, programs initiated. Granted, the initial outlay is uh, is, is considerable, and I'll, I've got some um, uh, information on that, which I'll give you in a moment. Um, but over time, these costs would be overcome because, first of all, you'd be using the pool more often, which means uh, a greater income uh, from, from, uh, from fees. Um, and here again, uh, lastly, with a year-round pool, Putnam County would be more on a par with such uh, communities as Alachua County and the St. Augustine, which do have year in um, uh, uh, pools. This is basically uh, 
a cost estimate from um, ASP, American Swimming Pool Company up in Jacksonville. It covers basically um, to put in the, uh, the heat pumps, three um, uh, heat pumps, pool covers to cover the, uh, uh, the pool so that the, you know, the heat generated would not be lost uh, overnight. Uh, along with the heat pumps, you would need um, uh, a storage wheel to roll and unroll the, um, uh, uh, the blankets. And these are some of the uh, estimated costs. Okay. Okay, just one moment. Let me make sure that he's complete with his commentary. You want this original back? Okay, just, just one moment, ma'am. I will recognize you in a moment. I want to make sure that his presentation is complete. Also attached to that um, uh, price quotation are the um, participant figures for 2015 uh, as far as uh, pool usage is concerned. Uh, last year we averaged 53 swimmers a month uh, for six months, 318. If we had it all year round, these figures would be projected uh, to be double. Again, an increase in uh, income uh, for the use of the pool and a greater service to the residents of Putnam County. Does that conclude your presentation? Pretty much so. I'll be happy to entertain any questions uh, okay. that you what, may have. What I'm, my, my, my follow-up to your presentation is thank you for taking the time uh, to put together the historical significance and the data that you do have here and to all of our citizens uh, who have uh, placed their name on this petition that is, that's commendable. Um, presenting this to us is, is, is also appreciated. We do have a recreation committee. We have a director. And the proper uh, protocol and procedure would be for that committee to, to vet this. Um, it is known by the commissioners that uh, the heated pool, uh, the abilities to control uh, through a thermostat, the temperature of the water does enhance the quality and the excellence of the performance uh, of, of all who are in the competitive sport. Uh, it, it's not falling on deaf ears, but it does need to be properly vetted through the committee, through the director, uh, so that we can not only just uh, agree uh, with the concept and, and, and appreciate it, and at the end of the day, it's on the shelf somewhere, but if, it, if it's properly vetted there, then the director will have an opportunity to evaluate, analyze, any recommendation can come to us, not only the what, but the how and the when, all of those details can be ironed out. So if you would be willing uh, to meet uh, with our director, she is here, um, and, and she can uh, kind of give you an idea of when uh, you will be able to make this presentation before uh, that committee, and I'm sure they will be very optimistic and welcome you uh, to their proceeding. Well, I'd be happy to, uh, uh, to do that. Yes, sir. All right, sir. I think there may be some other questions, Commissioner Harvey. Um, sir, thank you for coming today. I appreciate this. I've been kind of waiting on this for a few months. I've been contacted by a few people that have signed this petition that it was going to come before our Parks and Recreation Committee, and I was kind of, you know, I saw this on our agenda. We didn't know about this ahead of time. We'd be glad to have that in that committee and talk about that with our director and vet that properly before we come back to the board. So we would... I've, I've been waiting, and uh, and I'm looking forward to that happening in in our committee. Okay. Well, I'll be quite frank with you, I didn't expect the the board to 
make a decision today on this. Uh, Although that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> but a decision is wanted, and, and it yeah. comes, as the chairman said, it comes through the proper channels, and that's where we vet that at. So we'll be looking forward to, to doing that at our earliest meeting we can get you on. Okay, thank you very much. Tom, state your, state your name um, and address for the record, please. Monica Harper, 131 Coolwater Avenue, and yes, I just wanted to, um, as a parent, my son's on the swim team. Yes, ma'am. So not only do we have the high school swim team, we also have a county swim team right. yes, that is growing, and, and for the student or the children that aren't involved in sports, this is an excellent. Yes, ma'am. Yes, You're singing to the choir. We appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I just wanted to. <laughs> Just, just to let the county commissioners know that this is something for, for everybody. Yes, ma'am, and, and we respect and appreciate that. And uh, again, our director, our very efficient director, is here, and she will certainly give you the proper time and venue uh, to take this further. Okay, who is that, please? She's right behind you, Miss Angie Wisnett. Wave your hand. Angie, wave it. There you <laughs> go. Okay. okay, I'll get with her. Thank okay, you. thank you very kindly. Thank you for being here. Okay, item nine on the agenda is a request for information on matters related to the animal control facility. I'd like for Mr. Salmons or Mr. Hammonds uh, to please come, and then Mr. Tim Hotelling, who has requested this information, will come right behind you if you will make the presentation first uh, as to what happened and what all was, um, was has led up to us being where we are now uh, concerning animal control facility. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you all this morning? Doing great. Good. Uh, basically, um, the symptoms of parvo are vomiting, profuse diarrhea with or without blood, affecting dogs are usually anorexic, febrile, which means feverish, and dehydrated. Clinical signs may be worse in young puppies and those with concurrent diseases, parasites, stress, sudden death. As you well know, most of the dogs that we end up getting are typically anorexic. Uh, they're not necessarily feverish, but they are malnutritioned. Um, oh, going the wrong way. Um, after we found out about the parvo uh, from the rescues that had taken five of the dogs, we removed all the animals for, uh, from the kennels, uh, sprayed the kennels and the chain link fence down with bleach, scrubbed them, then we pressure washed them, and we mixed up a bucket of kennel saw. Uh, and scrubbed the kennels again. We also washed all the bowls, buckets, and anything else uh, with bleach and Kennesaw. Interface, uh, information about Kennesaw is following, which these are the things that uh, Kennesaw does. I won't go through all of them, but it's, uh, uh, we basically followed the ASPCA. I think that's the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Uh, we followed their process. Uh, and the only thing that we weren't that we didn't uh, do because we didn't know which kennels they were, they recommended that the kennels that the dogs were in were uh, would be kept vacant for 10 days. But we didn't know which kennels they were in, so we didn't do that. But we did everything else. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. Um, anything to add, Mr. Hammonds? Okay, thank you, Mr. Tim Holt. Please come forward. You've um, heard the explanation as to process and procedure. Appreciate that. I just yes, a couple questions is just five dogs, and is there anything that could be done to uh, preclude such a thing or minimize uh, a recurrence? I understand it's in in the you know it's out there, but so that uh, you can minimize the damage. Yeah, one of the. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, we found out that some other uh, animal control facilities uh, spray, uh, uh, close down twice, twice a year in the spring and the fall and do a three-day cleaning. Uh, we're going to start that procedure. Uh, we did it. We, we obviously, we just did it now. We'll do it again in the spring. And the other thing is the animal control facility, as you know, and we're looking for a new one. Uh, has issues. Uh, if we get a new facility, we can resolve some of those problems. The waste system that's out there is not really the best. Uh, basically, we push the feces to a trough, and the trough rolls down with water to the septic tank. But it's it's not a real good facility. Uh, 
concept. But time and technology certainly uh, is a factor there, and this commission uh, is aware of the fact that uh, our facility uh, does not lend itself for um, the advanced methodologies that do exist as it relates to taking care of, of, of the animals. I think that my applauding to the staff is based upon uh, maximum efforts with uh, minimum uh, applications as it relates to what all the options are. And I want to certainly commend uh, Commissioner Libel for uh, being the quarterback in many ways from the legislative perspective uh, to keep um, us informed and abreast of what's what. But this commission, um, as a team, is proactively uh, pushing forward, um, and, and that information is going to every agency uh, that has anything to do with uh, quality enhancements and, and, and facility, uh, construction of facilities of this type. So we, we are pursuing through your department and through, again, the uh, connections uh, that we have legislatively to uh, bring to this county a facility uh, that would be, um, that would eliminate some of the issues that are there. Mr. Libel. Um, I'd like to just add that we did, in our adoption facility, also have a total wash down there, too. And we, we vaccinate all incoming animals. Uh, unfortunately, this does happen time to time, and our facility absolutely does not lend to the state-of-the-art techniques for keeping this kind of disease down. But with that being said, thank you for the accolades, but we are, and thank Mr. Leary and staff especially, John has worked very hard, Brian Hammonds and Lisa, um, without a doubt. And we're way down the road. Our legislative delegation has got, um, we have their ear. Um, they're looking for monies to match with monies that we have here in the county. And we hope to uh, have that state-of-the-art facility in the very near future. And I want to thank you commissioners for supporting the effort here. We really need to bring this area of our service up. We really do. And, and we'll do it together. There's no doubt in my mind. And, and, and we plead for the patience and understanding of all concern. Um, we are not in any way, shape, form, or fashion trying to keep any of our citizens uh, out of the loop. But there is a need for a protocol to be followed. There's a need for what we call joint participation uh, as needed. But at the end of the day, uh, the staff who are properly trained uh, and, and who bring the expertise to the table, their instructions and directives have to be followed. And anybody that have any other ideologies and things of that nature, uh, they have to do that at home. They cannot bring that to us unless it meets the standard of the protocol that has been established. And so uh, thank you again for your leadership, uh, just as uh, Mr. Libel has said. Any other comments from the commissioners? Mm -hmm. thank, thank you again, Mr. Tim Ho. Thank you. Okay, all is well. I'm going away. <laughs> This time, since Mr. Salmons is front and center. That's what I just stated. <laughs> uh, good segue. Uh, we are moving into the uh, code enforcement um, section of our agenda. Uh, we have abatement and or foreclosure cases, abatement uh, and fine reduction cases. Commissioners, um, we will take on now 10A, abatement and or foreclosure case number 2007-0180 and 2012-0598, heirs of James Kendrick. Are there any representatives of that family in this case here? Please just come closer uh, there as the presentation is being made to us. We will give you an opportunity uh, to uh, participate and give us input as necessary. Mr. Salmons. Uh, this property is located at uh, 102 Putnam Avenue in East Palaka. It's right on the corner of Putnam Avenue and Putnam County Boulevard. Yep. Uh, this is the house in question. The house uh, has been this way, uh, you know, since before 2007. The yard is very overgrown. It's, uh, I was trying to get some better pictures of the house, but uh, it's so hard to get close to the house because of the, the uh, uh, foliage and the spiders and all that stuff and burrs and stuff, so I couldn't get there. But uh, uh, the uh, property was first seen by code enforcement on February 2nd, 2007. Uh, there was a deteriorated home and care premise issue on the property. A notice of violation was sent out on February 28, 2007, giving 30 days to come into compliance. Nothing happened, and so uh, we sent a notice of hearing out on June 15, 2007. The owner said he had heart condition and would try to take care of some of the cleanup items. 
He did manage him of the lawn. Staff gave the owner 90 more days because of his health uh, and the heat. Uh, the case went before the special magistrate on February 21st, 2008. And he gave the owner until March 24th, 2008 to come into compliance or $25 a day fine would commence. And the $100 administrative fee uh, was also charged. Nothing happened and the case was sent for foreclosure or and or abatement hearing uh, on December 11, 2008. <coughs> The special magistrate did recommend a foreclosure or abatement. A lien was also recorded on December 27th, 2008. The uh, property continued to deteriorate. On March 13, 2012, uh, building official Paul Myers inspected the house and found extensive termite damage and instructed code enforcement officers to look at abatement. On August 20th, 2013, the ownership had changed to the heirs of James Kendrick. A new letter was sent out. There was a tax day sale on August 14th, uh, uh, but the heirs still own the property, so I don't know that anybody bought, uh, took the certificate. Uh, the uh, hearing was uh, scheduled for possible foreclosure and abatement, even though the property went for tax deed sale. On February 19, 2015, the special magistrate once again heard the request to abate and or foreclose on the property and gave <laughs> authorization to do so and staff is requesting the board to authorize abatement on this property. Okay, ma'am, please come forward. Good morning. Uh, please be at ease. Uh, your name and address for the record. Emily Verdell, 286 Cervantes Avenue, St. Augustine. Okay, uh, the case that's been presented to us um, through the Planning and Development Services Department uh, as it relates to code enforcement, uh, do you uh, agree with the summary that has been presented? Okay, yes, do, you, do you have any questions on the recommended actions? It was just new to me. When my dad died in 2010, I didn't know anything about it until I think probably 2012. Okay. Um, I knew that it had happened in the past. I thought it was cleared up. So I've just, you know, trying to deal with a bunch of other financial things that he left for me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, we certainly, um, express our empathetic feelings, um, you know, based on you, you know, coming into the picture at, at this particular point in time. Uh, do you have any questions? Just what, I mean, is there a way for me to save it? What needs to happen? That, that's really the only question I have. I don't, I'm not sure what happens at this point. Okay, Mr. Salmons. Yeah, I think if, if, uh, She's serious about trying to um, uh, save the house, uh, and if she can clean up the the uh, yard area and uh, come up with a timetable as to when she can uh, actually do the house, uh, we could work with her on that. Okay. So does that alter the recommendation or not? Yeah, that would be my recommendation. So that's a revised recommendation. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Simmons, this house. Does this house have the ability to be saved, or we're uh, talking about tearing it down? I'm not sure. I th once you get all the the, uh, the weeds and stuff around from it, she'll have a better idea. Uh, Paul Myers okay. uh, went out there when the, the yard was in better shape and said there was extensive termite damage. Neither she nor I can evaluate that until such time as the yard is. Well, noticing by her head that yeah. she's. You want to okay. tear the yes, place sir. down. My goal eventually Come is to Come closer to the down. microphone. Mm -hmm. You can pull it right to you. There you um, go. I'm so sorry. My Get goal right eventually is to tear it down and build a home there and move back to Putnam County. Okay. Or build a home or, or do something with that So property. you would like to tear it down yourself and not the county abate it so you can control that? Yes, sir. Okay. So you can work with them on, on a time frame. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, again, if that is your decision, then it cannot be an eventual date there has to be you have to be able to sit down with them they will express and explain uh, proper procedures and time factors that are involved okay. uh, this board is noted for working with our citizens uh, who really are sincere about it we all have difficulties that we encounter and that we face but we want you to know that we are proactive as it relates to Clean it up, clean it up, but it cannot be an indefinite time frame. And as long as you are aware of that, then um, I think that we, we should be able to work some things out. Yes, sir. Turn over to, um, uh, yeah, John, if we, 
what would be the modified recommendation to uh, to take what specific action so that the motion is appropriate for today? Are we? Yeah. Why don't this? we? we delay this for 60 days and that will give us the time to uh, talk with her and figure out what she's doing and for her to figure out what she wants to do and when she can do the demolition. Exactly, and, and, what, and what's her, her ability? If, we, if, she, if she's got that schedule and gets the demolition permit and is continuing, we won't have to come back. If she doesn't, right. we can come back in uh, December. And okay. uh, Motion to table case number 2007-0180 and 2012-0598 for a time frame of 60 days. Mr. Second. Chairman, I move approval. Uh, Proper motion and a second. 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 Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Like saying, hearing none. Thank you so much for coming. The next case is item 10B, abatement and or foreclosure, case number 2014-0280, Tarpon 4 LLC. This is at 411 Topper Street in Interlochen. Uh, code enforcement went on the site, and there's some pictures of it. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to want to try and save this one. So, um, the... Uh, uh, code enforcement went to the site on May 20, uh, March 28, 2014, and found an unsafe residential structure. Santa Nosa hearing uh, for an unsafe building on April 2nd, 2015. On uh, May 6, 2014, notice of violation of hearing was sent out. The special magistrate heard the case on July 17, 2014, and found the property to be in violation. and gave him until September 2nd, 2014, to bring the property into compliance or a $25 day fine would commence. $100 administrative fee was also charged. Uh, the case came back before the special magistrate and the property was still in violation. He ordered the lien to be recorded. The case went back to the special magistrate on June 18, 2015 and he ordered the county to proceed with foreclosure and abatement. And as you can see from the pictures, uh, uh, we definitely want to get that thing out of there. So staff has recommended uh, authorization to abate. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Are, th are there any representatives of Tarpon for LLC or any neighbors that are affected uh, through this case, number 2014-2080? Second calling. Are there any representatives here, neighbors or affected parties? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, for the hearing uh, is moving to the recommendation that is before us from Mr. Samuels. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of case number 2014-20. 0280 staff recommendations to abate the property. Second. Second. Proper motion, double seconds. Further discussion? Double seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 10C, abatement, case number 0212-0660 and 213-0238, Lewis Thomas Allen. Are there any family members, representatives of the family, property owners here for this case? Lewis Thomas Allen. Seeing no movement, Mr. Salmons, if you present the case. This is at 530 Kennedy Avenue in Interlochen. This is another mobile home that uh, is in, uh, whoops, going the wrong way. There, this is uh, that property. It's uh, collapsing on itself, and the, mobile, the uh, little accessory structure is also collapsing. Uh, <coughs> code enforcement received a complaint of the condition of the mobile home from the health department. Courtesy notice was sent out to the owner on uh, October 2nd, 2012, the owner's granddaughter called in and indicated the family wanted to remove the mobile home and sell the property. Uh, staff arranged a site inspection with the tenant who was actually living in the mobile home at the time on December 3rd, 2012. Staff found unsafe electric, which created an unsafe structure. Uh, nothing seemed to be happening, so staff went back out on February 27, 2013 and found that the unsafe electric was still an issue. Uh, the billing official gave the tenant who actually owned the mobile home itself, not but not the property, uh, until March 13, 2013 to bring the property into compliance. Another inspection was done on February 28th with the billing inspector, and he found a multitude of violations on the mobile home besides the electric. Uh, nothing was uh, done on April 30th, 2013. Uh, uh, site inspection showed all this siding had been stripped off the mobile home, a neighbor said that the woman who owned the mobile home was the one who took the siding off. Note of violation and hearing was sent out on May 28, 2013. Special magistrate heard the request on July 17, 2013, found the property to be in violation and ordered the property to be uh, in compliance by September 2nd, 2013, or $25 a day would find would commence. $100 administrative fee was also uh, addressed. Nothing obviously happened in uh, December 18, 2014. The special magistrate gave authorization to approve for foreclosure and abatement. 
Um, on October 6, 2015, the staff sent a letter out notifying him of the October 27th hearing today, and uh, we got no response, and we're asking for uh, this property to be abated uh, as well. Final call for any representatives, 535 Kennedy Avenue, Lewis Thomas Allen. No movement. What is the pleasure of this commission? Mr. Chairman, move uh, staff approval on cases 2012-0660 and 2013-0238. Second. Proper motion and a second to authorize abatement of the property. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. <coughs> Item D, fine reduction, case number 2013-0152, case number 2014-0525, Paul Horton. The any representatives of the Horton family are with us, are representatives of the properties. Uh, unless things change, he's up in uh, West Virginia. Okay. He went, could not, he had uh, uh, okay. uh, something that conflicted and he couldn't be here. So Present the case, sir. Thank uh, you. This is in 123 Hampton <clears throat> Circle in Georgetown. The property was first seen on uh, June 3rd, 2013, uh, staff found a, sig a significant care premises issue. We went through that process. Uh, you, you can read all that. Uh, we ended up abating the the uh, uh, care premise issue uh, uh, on November 26, 2014. Uh, by that time, staff had actually opened up another case, uh, the second case on the mobile home as being unsafe. A uh, special magistrate heard that request on August 21st, 2014 and found the property to be in violation and gave the owner until October 6, 2014 to come into compliance or $25 a day would commence. The $100 administrative fee was also uh, charged. Uh, staff talked with the owner on September 9, 2014 and he stated he wanted to come into compliance. He pulled a demolition permit. Nothing happened. Uh, the uh, case uh, the property was actually bought by tax deed um, on July 22nd, 2015. The new owner, Mr. Horton, who had not had any uh, ties to this property, uh, came in and pulled a demolition permit and uh, demolished the mobile home. The permit was finaled on September 21st, 2015. He requested a fine reduction hearing. The special magistrate heard this request for a fine reduction uh, and recommended the board accept $723 if it's paid within 45 days of BOCC action and for the five reasons that uh, are stated on your, uh, in your packet. Any questions by the board? Okay. Thank you so very much. Um, again, this is very thorough that has been presented to us and we recognize the uh, overbid on the tax deed sale as a factor um, along with the total cost of enforcement. Uh, when is the pleasure of this commission? I'd like to move approval of staff grove recommendations, Mr. Chairman. We have a proper motion second. by Commissioner Lyle, second by Commissioner Palacia, that the staff recommendations uh, be approved. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. At this time, the board will go in a five minute recess. All right. bringing some information he'll be right back uh, to share with us concerning a case from the October 13th meeting uh, mr. Joseph Agius is is here and there was um, he was in the meeting but was not aware that he should have come forth when it was time for him to come forth and then today he was in the meeting and doing public comments he was supposed to come forth so we're going to make sure in a few moments that he's uh, here so he can have a due process and and proper understanding of what the Which board's is decision is. It's, it's from the uh, October 13th oh, meeting okay. uh, there, and that's why Mr. Salmons went to go get his, okay. his packet so sure. he can bring us all back up uh, to date. Uh, I do have um, some information that I went and got out of, I went and retrieved from my office, so if you can just maybe peruse it and pass it down while we're going to the county administrator. And then by the time uh, Mr. Salmons is back, we can uh, 
decide if we're going to do anything forward on that. Mr. Rick Leary. I don't have anything beyond these appointments, uh, some of which have been pending for some time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you very kindly. Uh, District 2, <laughs> do you have any appointments, sir? No. I'm okay. Sorry. Uh, the administrator is wanting us to be aware <laughs> of some of the length of time that we've had some vacancies. Uh, and so if we do need to uh, make a request for a little newspaper help in case we don't have applicants that are living within these districts, uh, we can certainly uh, make I, that happen. I could use that help. Okay. I, I've really had a hard time finding somebody to fill the better place plan slot. Okay. And so we, we have uh, the Fishing Fund Advisory Committee, Better Place Plan, Affordable Housing Advisory, um, Commissioner District 1, do you have any niblets yet for that? No. Okay. I do have an appointment, but not that. Okay. All right. The Animal Services Advisory Committee, um, uh, again, there are nine appointments. Uh, and we see the various disciplines that, that must be represented and as well as the requirements for District 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then, Commissioners, if you have a candidate that lives in a district other than yours, you know, please share that with the administrator so that, you know, we don't lose a person just because the commissioner who represent, uh, who's, a, who's from that district does not uh, know that person. So please, if we can get resumes coming in or at least people interested, it would, it would make a difference. Commissioner Harris. Um, we, this is not on our agenda, but we all received an email uh, asking for an appointment from the USDA Southern Region Recreation Resource Advisory Committee. I spoke with Sam Carr. He's very interested in that kind of thing, and he has agreed to serve, so I'd like to nominate him. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. I guess we have to agree to make the nomination today, or is that necessary? There was no real sense of urgency associated with that email. It's just an opportunity for you to do that when it's convenient for you. Okay, so let's, let's, knowing that that's who you want to appoint, let's officially put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and I'm sure that it'll do that, but that way it, it's not kicked back for not being there. I just want to make sure we're technically correct in doing that but thank you commissioner for bringing that i mean certainly he is the the one <laughs> that should, should be representing us yes sir how many of those appointments did we have on that new mr leary can you M my sense of that email was that they were just inviting you to make one nomination to that just one for yeah, the entire board that's, that's my interpretation of yeah because it's it's 11 total but it, it covers quite a bit of area right yeah it's a statewide so there are uh, se several states yeah several states it's a regional southern, southern region yeah okay exactly so that that Georgia. certainly is an honor just to be able to be requested to submit one mm -hmm. yeah i think the, the magnitude well it takes that. a vast knowledge of trail uh, knowledge and where they are um, so they can go across jurisdictional lines and uh, serving on this board will give you that you'll see the Georgia trail system and in Florida and, and it goes into Alabama and the Carolinas too so it's really neat and it ties them all together and makes you attractive in the nation okay also um, Sam you know was the lead on the Bartram trail yes. and establishing it and we had the Bartram conference here not long ago it was quite successful and a lot of people from different states are very excited about our trail yes. and they would like for it to have more recognition and become a national trail so Sam thinks this would be an opportunity for us to bring that forward absolutely so that's the main reason that I would like to nominate yes. him Good and deal. by all means let's do that in a formal uh, more formal manner yeah. thank you so much are there any other appointments our I deputy have, attorney I'm sorry I have none sir. okay our deputy attorney is, is here um, with us today. Mr. Russ Casselberry, do you have anything, sir? No, sir. Not yet, right? Not yet. <laughs> Honorable Tim Smith, clerk of courts. I have no items today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Commissioner, comments, starting with Commissioner District 4. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, along with others of the board, I'm sure, will be attending the FAT conference this week, Florida Association of Counties Trust. Uh, last week, I attended my first class of the Accredited County Commission uh, class, and I got we got a I got a scholarship to attend that series. So that's my first of two, and I'll be finishing that up in April. 
And tonight is Gator Club meeting, as you can tell by the tie. Uh, Putnam County Gator Club. I know Russ will probably be in attendance there. Is that correct? No. Uh, <laughs> Guest speaker. <laughs> Guest speaker. Um, but tonight, you're all welcome to come out. It's steak night at the golf course, 630. And uh, we have a very dynamic Putnam County Gator Club. And I, I'd be remiss to say, my wife and I's anniversary of our first date is this coming Saturday, Florida-Georgia game. 31 years Linda and I have been together. And I don't know how she's put up with me, but it's been a, she's a saint. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Commissioner Pellissier. Uh, other than correcting Commissioner Harvey, your advanced county commissioner class. Yes. Not your credit, I'm sorry. Yes. Anyhow, nothing uh, from District 5, all caught in all the right. west. District 1. Um, I alluded to the Bartram Trail, and we had the Bartram Society, people from all over different states, uh, attended, and it was very well done. Um, our chairman uh, appeared before the banquet that night and uh, offered the blessing. And it was a very interesting evening, wasn't it? The speakers so. were just amazing. Sorry. And um, I just think we brought a lot of people to town and we showed off Putnam County at its best. And the and speaker was from where? Um, the main one was from England, yeah, she was. and she wrote uh, a couple of books about, uh, let's see, what was it called? The Brothers, My Brother's Gardener, or right. Gardener Brothers, yeah. anyway, in England, and how um, plants and things were brought from the United States over to England, where gardening was very important. This is in the 1800s, and they have a lot of our trees and plants over there because of that. And... Um, it was just quite a history, and uh, I was surprised at the number of people that came from all walks of life and from everywhere. And um, it was just a really nice chance to showcase Putnam County and our river, and I hope for many more things like that in the future. Yes, and just as a segue, um, Commissioner Harris, to the dedication and commitment of the committee is just is unsurpassed. I mean, you could, you could tell the passion when you're bringing in uh, a conference of that magnitude and uh, logistics and coordination of all of those things, it's just, it's amazing. And the enthusiasm of the out-of-state guests are saying, you know, we've been reading about it, we've been reading about it, and we've been reading about it for years and years and years. And the opportunity to come, I don't think a kid on Christmas morning could have been any happier uh, than those individuals and one of the climaxing events was the dedication of the Bartram Trail uh, mural uh, there on uh, 3rd Street. Um, it, was, uh, it was awesome um, for exposure for our community and, and, and we certainly need to commend um, Sam Carr and the entire committee uh, for, for their hospitality because um, people were talking about buying property in Putnam County and having a getaway and all of that and it's like, okay, come on down. <laughs> right, Commissioner Leibold. Um, I'll be attending in St. Augustine this Wednesday for two days the uh, Florida Association of the Counties Trust uh, Risk Management uh, Retreat. And I'll represent the county. I'm sure we have some county members attending that. And for those that don't know, it's our, the insurance wing um, that 22 small rural counties all together collectively uh, pool their resources to insure themselves and it saves us a lot of money in rural counties and also gives us a lot of control so it's a worthwhile endeavor and I look forward to it and I appreciate all the support from the board thank you very kindly and if Miss Wanda Ruckowitz was here she would have reminded us of spooktacular at QI Roberts <laughs> junior senior uh, school uh, the band concert is on October 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the uh, QI Roberts cafeteria and that's um, <coughs> October 29th one more mr. chairman if I yes could. sir uh, you reminded me boo on the Avenue <laughs> <laughs> this is Friday from 3 30 to 5 30 downtown Palaka and the merchants all sit out in front of their stores and the children come from all over uh, mainly it's Palatka, but some of the county, and um, they trick or treat there in the business district. So, okay. And there's a zillion fall festivals this Saturday, so yes. as you're driving, be careful. <laughs> there's yes. a lot going on. And also, we 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 pray for the safety of all concerned. The, the traditional uh, trick or treat or Halloween 
we are hoping that it's becoming a thing of the past where people are walking up to unknown homes uh, and putting themselves in jeopardy that they will participate in the festivals for safety, mainly for safety it's there. I know way. that the uh, Sheriff's Department, Police Department is supposed to have extra patrols to make sure that those individuals who have um, violated the trust of society or with their lifestyle that they don't prey upon our children and we want to make sure that uh, the word is out and that adults and parents do accompany their children especially if they are uh, going through the neighborhood. Okay, any further commissioner comments? Commission has been requested um, that we uh, hear Mr. Joseph Agius. Uh, if you will please uh, come forward, Mr. Salmons is here. Uh, during our meeting on October 13, 2015, uh, there was a request for a fine reduction. Uh, the vote from this commission was to reduce the fine from $2,775 to $800 if it is paid uh, within 60 days of the board action, which means that uh, the uh, respondents have until uh, January 11, 2016 to pay the fine. Um, and because of uh, a miss communication uh, with the understanding of Mr. Agius. Um, he did not realize when he was called upon that he could dispute the fine amount uh, uh, there if he chose to. And so that's why uh, he is uh, here. So Mr. Salmons, if you would just kind of let him, let Mr. Salmons speak first just to refresh the memories of the board and then you can come and um, right behind him, sir. Yeah, basically this property was a deteriorated residential structure that we took uh, before the special measure on December 8, 2011. Uh, he had heard the case, we sent a notice out then, we, he heard the case on January 19, 2012 and gave the property owner until April 3, 2012 to bring the property into compliance. Um, nothing happened, a demolition permit was obtained by Mr. Aegis on April 4, 2012, uh, but the work wasn't completed. The case went back before the special magistrate on May 17th. He ordered the fine to be uh, recorded as a lien. The demolition was uh, completed on July 20th, 2012. Uh, the agencies did not uh, pay off the fine at that time. On July 29th, uh, 2015, J.J. Gullett requested a fine reduction hearing for the agencies. And uh, the uh, staff had recommended that the cost uh, for handling the case was $1,000. Uh, we had recommended that to the special magistrate. He reduced uh, that down to $800 in lieu of the $2,775 fine if it was paid within 60 days, uh, basically because Mr. Gullet came in and said that the, uh, the agents has tried to do uh, the right thing in a timely manner. Okay, thank you very kindly. Mr. Agius, the uh, fine was reduced um, in lieu of the $2,775 fine with an initial recommendation of 1,000 down to 800. What is your request this morning, sir? Well, as far as the 800, the first was 700, I believe. Then this letter says 800. But the way I feel, and I'm glad you gave me this opportunity to tell you how I feel. Okay. Number one, do you think we need a code enforcement in Putnam County? Are we turning communism, or what are we doing? You, the senior citizens, such as myself, I'm working on my 82nd year, mm -hmm. and the property owners, uh, they're getting blamed for everything. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm being hanged here by all of you, and I didn't kill anybody. Why blame me? Me and my wife were away up in Ohio on Michigan to see the kids, grandchildren, and our great-granddaughter. I left Danny Driscoll in charge. He worked for me for about three years on and off. Now, for some reason or other, he went back to North Carolina or, or, and Kentucky. He had relatives there. And you're blaming me and you're punishing me. I know it's easy for an attorney to put a lien on something, but think, is that fair? I'm, I'm the owner, yeah, I grant you that. And I paid $40,000 for, 
to the county this last three years. You can all check on that for the properties I have. And uh, I told the judge I don't have any money. He said, oh, I don't believe that you, you own too much property. Anyways, to cut a long story short, and I won't take too much of your time, I forgot about it. I think it was three years ago. I had bad tenants, and I had vandalism. They took copper wires off. Anyways, that's another story. Okay. So why do I have, why do you give me a fine? It was, I, I, you know, I done my best as a property owner, and, and I had somebody working for me. He let me down. Okay. You know, I can understand this. But I, I think uh, you probably have hit the nail on the head. The person who you held accountable yes, to bring or to maintain your properties and to keep your properties in compliance, that person apparently let you down, according to your words. Yes, sir. And as a result of that, when the property was initially seen on July the 22nd, 2011, with the unsafe mobile home, you know, again, we want to protect our citizens. We want to protect your property rights and all of those things. But your neighbors also have the same rights uh, to, to be protected and the health and the safety and the welfare of all concerned. And so the record is showing us that our department worked with you or worked with whomever you designated to the best of their ability. But at the same time, when the case came up in January of 2012, uh, the violation was set. They gave a reasonable amount of time till April for the property to be brought into compliance uh, there. And, and again, we push for voluntary compliance. This board and none of the code enforcement representatives are seeking to punish or penalize the property owner. We want properties to be brought up to the standard of compliance so that it's safe, not only for the owner, but for all of the affected and the contiguous property owners in the area. So once the permit was obtained in April of, uh, the demolition permit was, was obtained in April of, of 2012, but again, the person who you put your confidence in let you down, not the county, the person who you hired or would have been hiring as the contractor. So keep in mind, three years had lapsed. It was 2015 uh, there, and the county could have been aggressive and could have really pushed this through, but because of the merciful uh, methods that are used through the department, it was all delayed uh, to give opportunity for compliance. Then when the recommendation came, Keep in mind, we have staff, professional staff, that have to do all of these things uh, to keep the, to put the case together. So the recommendation uh, not only was a fine, the fine was a fine that was assessed because it was, it was the penalty. That was weighed and it was reduced uh, to an amount of $800. So you're coming today if what is your recommendation to us? What are you requesting from us? Just don't find me at all. Don't find you at all. I'm a property owner. Okay. I'm paying taxes. I'm paying for protection, mm -hmm. okay, through our taxes, as you know. And uh, vandalism is not my fault. I called the sheriff, oh, I don't know how many times in different places <laughs> mm -hmm. where they stole things. And uh, this particular one, the gentleman died and I got the property back. And that's when they start vandalizing it. Unfortunately, there is a criminal element that is throughout the world. And you know, we, we, we regret that. But at this particular point in time, I'm going to listen to uh, the commissioners. Uh, the, your case was properly vetted. Uh, we have a recommendation from both staff and the, and the special magistrate uh, there and the timeline of, uh, of 60 days, uh, would an extension of the days help you out at all? I don't know. Okay. What helps me is if you forget the fine. Well, this is definitely not my fault. Yes, sir. And that's what I meant by I feel like you're hanging me and I didn't okay. kill anyone. Well, no, we're, we're not, no. Mr. Ages, we're not here to say it's your fault, but we are saying that you have to be accountable 
and responsible for the actions that have occurred. And we're trying to, again, all we really want is voluntary compliance, but the county has invested into the case, has nothing to do with the taxes that you have paid because the taxes that you paid has been based on valuation of the properties. And so we appreciate you being a, a, a taxpayer, but at the same time, this is uh, a different issue, commissioners. Mr. Chairman, yes, <clears throat> um, usually in the fine, we just include enough to get our money back that we have invested, the office staff and the people to go out and check the property and um, look at it and send notices to get compliance. Had you, when you first received the notice, fixed it, it, it wouldn't be as big as it is. Um, I understand that you've had a bad time. I guess you've been absent and you haven't been able to look after your properties, but you, you should on occasion, you know, look at it and see what the neighbors have to endure when it's really in bad shape. I always look at the property, uh, but I wasn't here at this time when it happened, okay? We had one great granddaughter we never seen. The other one we've seen before. We have children in two different states. So, you know, you can't work seven days a week. They tell me I work eight days a week, but I think they're wrong, you know. <laughs> Thank you, so Mr. So that's Davis. why I think you should forgive this, okay? Because it's not my fault. Because I'm a property owner, you're penalizing me. It isn't something I done myself or neglected myself. So, so again, we're not here to blame you, but there is an accountability factor, Mr. Pellisier. Mr. Simons, what's the property look like today as we speak? Does it look like that? We demolished the mobile home. Yeah, yeah, that looks demolished. But is it, it's cleaned up. It's, it's all gone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's in compliance now. Okay. How long has it been in compliance? Since it's been empty. How long has it been since it's been completely gone? All this cleaned up and hauled away? <coughs> yeah. May 17th, two I don't know, two years. So when, 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 when the recommendation came to us, it was in compliance then? July 20th, 2012, he had July, I'm sorry. He just didn't pay the fine. Okay. The fine reduction at that time. Okay, so the fine reduction is just a delayed, uh, and because of Mr. Gullett, making the request and so I think that the hardship all of that was considered then uh, anything else to add mr. Harvey mr. Lyle I have none what is the recommendation from this board mr. chairman I feel like we've already made the recommendation and I feel like we need to uphold the staff recommendations okay appeal denied what is the pleasure is that a is that a motion sir that's a motion sir. I have a proper motion and a second proper second further discussion just that I would like to, to speak to you that you say this is not your fault, but I don't feel that way. When you're a property owner, you're a property owner, and it yeah, comes so with why responsibilities. I get well, because it spanned it over well over three years, sir, and uh, there's no way you couldn't. Have you known mean this. about the fine? Yeah, that's another thing. I forgot all about that. I went to court like I was asked to, and the judge didn't listen. Like your folks are not listening sometimes. Uh, so it's easy to put a lien on your property, my property, or everybody's property. And this is, to me, it's like communism. And we fought. My daddy was a major in the U.S. Marines. I served two years in the, in the U.S. Marines. And when I come home, I work, I invest my money, I don't spend it. You know, foolishly that is. We're spending money every day, all of us, I know. But just keep in mind that just as you are accountable, you had someone that you should have been holding accountable, that person failed you, and then we cannot just set a new precedent no. so that people that are coming behind you will throw your case up in our face. And I think that the mercy has been extended. Uh, uh, I think that the, the staff has been as, as, as cordial and as understanding the magistrate, I think, was very empathetic as well, and I believe that we're being empathetic, but at this particular point in time, I do have a motion 
uh, on the floor uh, with the proper second uh, to uh, maintain uh, the case without uh, and denying the appeal. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you so much for presenting your case and please understand it's not a penalty on our part, it's a matter of us upholding the, the law. One request before I go. Yes, sir. If this happened to anybody else, yes, sir. shouldn't the code enforcement send them at least a notice every three months or something? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're busy trying to make a living. Yes, sir. And paying our bills and our taxes and everything else. Yes, sir. And I just forgot about it. Well, again, we regret that, but there were no additional penalties imposed upon you once that was set. It's, it has not been an interest added to it or any of that, so that part should be somewhat consoling. Yeah, but the first was $100. And it kept going up. No, that they, was the administrative. charge interest? No, and sir. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, we can explain it to you better. But please get with that department. And again, you have to January of 2016. But thank you so much for bringing your appeal to us. So are you saying that I have to pay it? Yes, sir. Between now and January the 16th. That's awful. But that's, if that's your decision, I respect it. But thank you for okay. the mutual respect. And... Uh, Gillett paid the fine already, didn't he? When I sold the piece of property, they kept the money. And when he was here, he told me it went down to 700. Mm -hmm. I got one letter, the last letter says eight, but that's in there, here or there. It's still good American go money. Back, go back by the office and just get a confirmation, a final confirmation on what the expectations are so that you don't have to ever deal with code enforcement ever again. We don't want anybody to deal with code enforcement, to be honest. Well, Thank you so either. much. All right, we're going to take a three-minute recess, and then we will come back Thank into you. an executive session uh, to deal with workers' compensation uh, settlements. And this is an executive session, uh, which means that the uh, meeting uh, is a closed uh, meeting with the uh, county attorneys. Thank you.